Welcome to another mini video from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to create yet another furball with yet another approach. After doing the first one with lines and pressure curves, the second one, this green one, with a textured brush. This time I'll be working with basic shapes, tapered strokes, symbols and global colors. For the body and the eyes, I'm reusing circular shapes I created in the previous videos. The body is a deformed circle, the eyes are circles with gradients and blurs. The hairs are clusters of lines with pressure curves with global colors assigned to the strokes. I turn each of those clusters into a symbol. If you have not worked with symbols before, the advantage of symbols is pretty simple. Once you change one symbol, all copies of the same symbol are changed. When the synchronize is turned on, you can turn it off to make changes just to one copy of the symbol. In this case, I will keep the sync on and all the copies will be altered when I change one. I start by taking the darkest cluster, duplicate the symbol, rotate, scale it and place it along the outside of one side of the body. I select these symbols on one side, duplicate them, mirror them and move them to the other side. I fill the gap at the bottom with another duplicate. Move those out a little bit more and then take the next lighter symbol, place it on top of the body and repeat the process. I duplicate, rotate, scale and position the symbols along the shape of the body. I select all elements on one side, duplicate them, mirror them and move them to the other side. Looking at the layer panel, it's starting to get a little confusing. I select the symbols above the body, group them and select the symbols below the body and group them as well. That way I just have two objects in my layer panel. I take the next lightest symbol, place it on top as well and repeat the process. Organizing your layer panel with edit groups or layers doesn't take long, but it usually pays once the design gets a little bit more complex. I take the lightest symbol, place it on top and fill the empty spaces. I select the sides, duplicate, mirror them and place them on the left. I add another light symbol behind the eye, duplicate it mirror it to the right side and take a darker symbol, place it below the eye. I rotate it, place it below the left eye, duplicate and mirror it and place it below the right eye. To fill the remaining empty spaces, I use strokes with a pressure curve, adjust the thickness of the lines to match the hair I created with the symbols. Using the node tool, I can now go in and make changes. As you can see, changing one line in one symbol alters all copies of that symbol. I can turn the sync off and make a change and it won't affect any other. If I turn the sync back on and give this stroke a gradient, the gradient will appear in all copies of this symbol. If you want to know more about the synchronizing of symbols and their elements, check out a video I recorded earlier. The symbols allow me to change the colors and gradients, but also change the symbol entirely. Working within the symbol, I can add more elements. I can thinen the stroke of the hairs, for example, and duplicate all the hairs as long as I work within the symbol, rearrange them and give the darkest fur a lot denser look. I repeat the process with the other three symbols to give the critter a lot more and a lot thinner hair. I probably should have gone totally wild and added some very long lines to show the effect. I didn't for this recording, but you give it a try, play around with it. Using symbols makes it really easy and fast to change the look entirely. For this mini video, I call the critter done. 
I worked with basic shapes for the body and the eyes, tapered strokes for the hair, used symbols for easy editing and global colors for quick color changes. I recorded two more videos on this topic. The first one using tapered strokes goes into more detail. The second one using textured brushes is another quick video to show an alternative workflow just like this one using symbols. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, click on the notification icon, leave a like and a comment, and I will see you again soon.